Greetings, everyone. We are here with Mr. D'Angelo Brister, also known as Daddy Lolo. And he's going to talk to us a little bit about himself and the connection he has with Robert Sylvester Kelly. And um, we're going to ask him some questions as well. So let's get started. Hi, Mr. Brister. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderful. I'm blessed by the best. All right. All right. So glad. <laughs> yes. So glad that you're here. So could you give us a little bit of introduction of who you are and how you met R. Kelly? Well, sure. My name is D'Angelo Brister. I am, um, I, most people know me as Daddy Lolo. Uh, I am Rob Scott's son. Um, back in the day, him and my mom, they grew up together in the same neighborhood. And right before he got big, uh, I was like three or four years old. He asked my mom, can he be my godfather? And she agreed on that, agreed on that with him. Mm -hmm. So that's how he became my godfather. There was like no ceremony going on. Right there. That's how we just did that. Well, nowadays anyway, a lot of people do that. Ask, can they be somebody's godfather or godmother without it? actual ceremony taking place. Right, right. So how does it feel to be the godson of Robert Sylvester Kelly? It's a uh, very, I really don't look at him as a, uh, as R. Kelly. I just look at him as just another person, as just my godfather. I, don't, I never like looked at him through the eyes of the world as the superstar. I never actually got to know that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know what's what's the person like behind the doors and I know like like once he on stage uh that's really when he considers himself a superstar because when he off the stage he's just a normal person to himself right right so tell me a little bit about D'Angelo Brister well I uh I'm a father, father of two daughters, uh, 18 years old and eight years old. I'm 36 years old. Um, I do uh, paratransit. Um, I'm a nice, easygoing guy. Try to, I'm very, very helpful. Um, nice, kind hearted. Um, always there, try to help people. Very, just a healthy person. And that sounds like a Chicago trait, huh? Yeah. <laughs> is that a Chicago is. thing? Wow. Uh, so it, it, you can you can say that it's a Chicago thing, but it all depends on how you were raised. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what made you decide to um, create the Facebook page that is very, very strong and powerful for the information for Robert Sylvester Kelly? Um, actually, I got the idea from my mom, actually. She, we, me and her had a talk, and I was a part of, like, this uh, group with the other people or whatever, and she was like, you don't need them. You can just do your own thing, and then you can do it better. Mm-hmm. So I decided to do my own thing, start my own Facebook group, do it that way as opposed to doing it through YouTube. Because a lot of people are not aware of things that's going on on YouTube. Right. Um, so I thought Facebook would be a better way to reach out to brand new people, get a whole new broader audience, and bring them into the light of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And when I did that, it just started growing. And growing and growing and growing. And right now is at uh, I think uh, one hundred and eighteen thousand people. Wow! <laughs> and, and just within like fourteen months, so fourteen fifteen months. Absolutely, because people really and truly care about Robert Sylvester Kelly, and I'm talking Robert Sylvester Kelly, the or the regular person, not the superstar. Um and and a lot of people are, you know, do you get criticisms because you are, you know, a supporter of Robert Sylvester Kelly? 
Uh, I've been getting criticism since I was like in high school when the supposed other case was going on during that time. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was like in 2002, so I was like a sophomore in high school. So I've been getting all types of criticisms, but I never let it phase me. I just let it go through one ear and out the other. Mm-hmm. I don't let it bother me. It's just a lot of, a lot of noise. Absolutely. It really makes for a very strong-minded individual to get through that, you know. And being so young, it's like, you know, wow. So give us a little bit of um, of a day that you and Robert would have together that would make it, you know, God's son, Godfather day. Like, what would a day look like to you? Going to the mall. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, basketball, a studio time, out to eat, uh, lifting weights. Um, that's pretty much around about it. Sometimes go to like amusement parks. Mm-hmm. So he was very active. He's a very active man, huh? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so now um, let's talk about the protest. Um, I I saw a video of you on YouTube, I think, and I'll put the information in the description box for those who would want to see the video. Could you share how that started and and how that felt to you? Okay. Uh, well, dealing with the protest. Uh. It had happened last year in August. Uh, I had first had a protest before the trial start, started in New York. Mm-hmm. And when that protest, how that came about was also through my mom as well. Mm-hmm. Her telling me, you know, you ain't got to uh, worry about teaming up with other people uh, that does it the wrong way. You can do it your way, do your own thing. So I decided to do my own little protest. Um, and I had two days where I went to, first day I had went to the uh, Brooklyn Federal Courthouse. And then the next day I went to Lifetime and Sony. Um, but that turned out pretty uh, pretty good for me. And then during the actual court hearing, um, I believe it was the day that the prosecution rests. And I was just out there and someone said, Lolo, let's just grab the bullhorns just in case, you know, we want to do some, say something, speak our mind. And I was all down for it. Had, had shirts made just in case. He wasn't planning on it necessarily, but it was just a just in case situation, so I felt the urge to do it. Mm-hmm. So I grabbed the bullhorn that day and just started uh chasing down prosecutors, telling them about themselves, how wrong they were and how they got this case all mixed up and it was just a bunch of lies put together um that they brought to the T V show and brought it into the courtroom. And just a whole lot of things. There was no Rico. There was no man act. Yeah. To me, there's no rights being to help. Right. To me, it seemed like it was entertainment. I think it was like Sony was trying to create, you know, a, this docu series in order to make sure that they kept money flowing. That's what I felt. Um, exactly. What you are you right? You mm-hmm. right on the head. Right. Right. right on the head. Uh, it is to my belief that this came, this whole docu series, this whole court case, it has nothing to do with these women per se. These, I think, these women are just being used by the higher ups. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's basically about his money. Yeah. Where where's his money? Uh, when he was out and about doing his uh, music or whatever, he somebody came to him and said, uh, it's time for you to get your money. He 
so he went to Sony and asked him for his royalty, his his rights as a, a musician, a writer, composer. He's worth uh, over like a billion dollars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So when he did that, then all of a sudden all these allegations came about the cult thing, and then he's holding women hostages. They they getting beat and all of this and. And then came the Lifetime documentary, and now we're here with the court cases. So it's like Sony invested a lot of this money. Like, whatever you do to keep him, his mind off of getting his money, then do it. We'll, we'll invest in And I believe that's what happened. Because hmm. now, instead of him having to fight for, to go get for his money, his publishing rights, his masters, now he got to fight for his life. Wow. Wow. And, and he's not the first person this, this has happened to. They tend to do this to a lot of people, like Michael Jackson and Prince and Whitney Houston. And it all seems to be about when they get to that 30-year mark, something happens. Hmm. And you are right. You are right. And, you know, now, could you tell us a little bit about the um, issue with when he caught COVID inside the institution? It Was he okay eventually? Like, you know, is everything okay now? Yes, everything's fine now. Okay. Uh, yeah, he had just caught COVID. They had, uh, had him uh, isolated. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they had a whole, uh, they put a hope to him preparing for his case as well. Right. So that put him at a disadvantage. For, like the lawyers couldn't meet with him, and do the no, uh, no uh, video conference or with him or nothing. Mm-hmm. He had to stay isolated. Right, right. Speaking of attorneys, how are you feeling about? Attorney Jennifer Bonjean personally helping Robert Sylvester. I'm loving it. Mm-hmm. I'm loving it. Uh, I sort of kind of, uh, I kind of, sort of kind of knew that we probably would get Jennifer Bonjean before we got Jennifer Bonjean. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I had actually hinted at it, hinted at it like when I was doing a, a interview when the uh, verdict came out and I did an interview with uh, Black News Channel BNC mm-hmm. and I said that uh, a lot of not, not too much worry about it because we don't probably have a high chance in the higher, higher courts uh, probably like with the same how they did with Bill Cosby that gives me a lot of hope mm-hmm. so I kind of like a hint out there. Absolutely. And that's a very smart hint because we need to be preparing ourselves for the Supreme Court level if we have to take it there. And that's what I'm doing for him now is just like gathering information, doing research to, you know, put things out there for people to view and think about because the the magic is in the conversations that we have about Robert Sylvester Kelly being, you know, alive and still here, you know, in the world, but separated from the world. It's like so weird. It's so weird. It feels weird. It looks weird. But we know when we hear his music, when we hear good, you know, um, things that's going on with him while being on the inside. Is he doing any music on the inside? No, (laughs) Mm. no, he's not doing no music. I wish he was. He wish he was, but he's not doing any music. They actually, he tried to do music when they first got him. Uh, he asked for his uh, music stuff. Uh, can he get his music stuff so that he can work on his music? And they told him no. Mm. Wow. So I know that that music is, that new music is just swarming all through his head. Like oh, the that's musical how he notes. Up with it all through his head. Yeah. Every day, like, just songs just playing in his head. Mm-hmm. 
I remember and then mm-hmm. now he don't have his device where he can record the song. That's a cannon in his head. Wow. So it's like it goes to his head, but sometimes he like forgets how like the rhythm of it uh, uh, and how it would go, the flow of it, the words. So it just came in his head and nothing's coming out. They're trying to separate him from his spiritual gift. Yes. Really, really trying to break. Now, I remember when he was on the Gail King interview and he said that, that this is not about music. This is about how social media can play, you know, the game with other people, like even individuals who maybe at one point loved him and went to all of his concerts and then seen this stuff happen. And then now they're like, oh, I'm staying away from it. I'm shying away from it. You know, that's really sad. That's really yeah. sad. Yeah, it is. And just like he was saying, the power of social media. And then now we're in this age where, like, um, you can counsel people, but because of something that you may have heard, it ain't got to necessarily be false. It ain't necessarily got to be true, rather. It could just be false information and just a rumor. Mm-hmm. And you can just cancel them, and and now they got it like, well, I cancel this person, then you should cancel them too, and then everybody just getting on, jumping on the bandwagon, like, yeah, we gonna, I'm gonna cancel them too, cause you, you cancel them, out, and then people feel, and every time somebody come out and say they not going to cancel him, now you get a whole lot of people dragging them for not canceling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I get a lot of, of comments on the um, R. Kelly Appeal TV. And for me, when I see negative comments, I delete them. I don't even leave them up, you know, um, and not a lot of them. There's not a lot of negative comments. There's just free R. Kelly because he needs to be out here. He needs to be more productive because he's not doing it. There's no consequence or punishment that he's getting being isolated from society, it's none. It's like just being in the timeout room, you know? But if you don't yeah. have anything to grow with in that room, how are you going to be productive when you come home? So, you, you, you know what I'm saying? I don't believe he's going to get life. There's no way. Let's yeah, talk about it. I don't think so either. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think so either. My whole thing is, is that it's just this process, and the longer the process goes, the longer he's in there. Yeah, yeah. And, and like God knows how long it's gonna take to for the appellate court to respond. Then after if they deny, how long will it take for the Supreme Court to respond and accept this case and overturn this verdict? Mm-hmm. Well, see, I know that they do have stipulations on time, you know, but then too, people falsify timelines and they don't put their documents in on time. And then they use that as an excuse to, you know, keep it rolling, keep time rolling. But, you know, the beautiful part about it is no matter what, if that's, if that appeal is, if that is overturned, his case is overturned. He's going to be able to get all that time back as well as financial, you know, support back from all of this, you know, and that's another thing. Like, you know, I tried very hard to look at the docuseries, the women, the main characters in the docuseries that really set this thing on fire. They're not saying anything right now. Nothing. Well, what can they say? They've been used. They they came for what they did, uh, which was they got their money, they got their notoriety. People, they got for whatever you want to call it, they fame from it. So they got all they don't their want record. anything else to do with it. Like yeah. you got one one accuser saying she don't want to go on. Uh, to do any more trials against her. She mm-hmm. had enough. Mm-hmm. And they trying to make her continue to do it. 
Oh, you're going to do it. Yeah, she's And she was sauce. saying that before it even the New York trial. She was saying she didn't want to do the New York trial before the trial. Uh. Uh, uh, uh. This is so sad. And was and and was it true that Andrea Kelly was worth four million dollars and she was crying about child support? Was that true or was that a rumor? Uh, I don't know how much she was worth. I know she had money. Yeah. Uh, then they're going to try to call him a deadbeat dad because he wasn't paying the child support. But when you look at it, he was only like three months behind in his child support. Wow. If he was a deadbeat dad, then he could have been years behind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he tried to go to the court and, and try to uh, ask them, can they lower the child support payment? Because he, his finances had changed. He wasn't doing the shows like that. His his music was uh being muted. His mm -hmm. shows was being canceled due to the whole R. Kelly campaign and the Me Too movement. Time is up and and she jumped on that bandwagon as well. Yes, she did. And, and that's the thing I didn't understand. And what's so crazy is she jumped on it months later, like <laughs> So much stuff had happened and people had started coming out and then here she comes like, oh, I could take advantage of the situation. Let me tell you what happened to me. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Maybe she probably thought they was going to come after her too. Yeah. So before they could try to come after her, mm -hmm. let me let me join this team. Yeah. Wow. Well, I I also want to know um, what what was the last conversation you had with Rob? Uh, the conversation was just basically about him you know, just getting his mind right for what's to come and trying to stay uplifted. If you ask him how he's doing, he'll tell you he's doing terribly good. If there's such a word, like I'm doing good for month, month, main moment, but it's not as good as as I would want it to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we, we try to stay away from talking about dealing with dealings with the case. Yeah. Um, don't try to talk to him about that. So it's just life in general. Yeah. So we talk about more uplifting things about what's new in in the music industry, which is much, not much of anything. Sorry. There's nothing new. It's like a drought in the musical industry. And that's why I believe that they threw that whole Hollywood situation with Will Smith to just get it started again. Hollywood is dead. Hollywood, Hollywood. Yes. Dead. You and know, when the Will, Will Smith thing came about, I thought it was a hoax. It was. To be honest with you. you didn't even see that. You didn't hear the slap. Like, and we were the, watching. The it. slap sound like made a punch in the face. Mm hmm. But, you know, that's here nor there. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I'm just saying that there's nothing new happening in musical industry. And I feel like that's another stagnating situation that you know he would have to deal with but i know the music is coming out of him you know you go back to the book solar coaster when the music was knocking on the door and he was hearing the musical notes and like the wind yeah you know like the what, wind uh, i believe i could fly yes the song the song came weird the song came to him in a dream when he was eight when he was a little kid then he came out and wrote it as an adult. Thought he was stealing somebody's melody, and it was actually his. It was his. A song that was delivered to him from the heavens, so to speak. That's going to touch the millions of millions, of, billions of people in the world. Uh -huh. and, and I just it went back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just went back to Born in the '90s, and I was looking at his. Um, 
his BET interview, how uh -huh. strong he was, how, you know, he was just so, he is so vibrant, but he was young back then. And there wasn't a lot of women around him at that point. He was just really enjoying life. You look at how your, your children and your grandchildren grow up. And I've had, you know, male children, you know, grandchildren. I have five grandsons right now. And I'm seeing the innocence in that video. Like yeah. just going to, going to the video store and looking at certain people, certain artists on cassette tapes and then looking at yourself <laughs> in yeah. that same video, the uh, store. And it's like, wow, look at how innocent he is. And yeah, at he, that he's time, like a child at heart. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what, what are some of the things that you would like to say to young men who are growing up right now, um, dealing with life? As, as an African-American in society, what would you tell them, you know, if they were going into the music industry from what you know? From what I know, mm -hmm. uh, stay focused, stay on the grind. Um, if it's really what you want to do, then go after it. If it's possible, um, go the independent way and avoid the record labels. Because uh, the record labels will find a way to screw you over, and uh, you get more money what you do with you doing it independently. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, um, I wanted to ask the question about Barry Hankerson and yeah. how you know that whole concept came up. Now, here's my theory. My theory was that the marriage license was probably a hoax. Um, somebody started that as a rumor and possibly they played into it, you know, to increase sales, record label sales. And the relationship that was supposedly the marriage license was possibly moving Aaliyah into independence from R. Kelly label. Um, could you share a little bit about that? Um, as far as, um, more or less, was that just moving her from his label into her own independent label, since we're talking about independent labels? Uh, to be honest with you, I really don't necessarily know what the heck happened with that whole situation. Um, but I know that it didn't seem to be authentic. Right. Uh, for one, if uh, Barry knew about this, then why would he want to continue to work with Rob Absolutely. years after? Yes, yes. And he's supposed to have been her uncle. But now you hear him on interviews talking about he would have hurt Rob, but he never did mm. physically. Right, right. Well, he, he got it on financially. Now, does he own his masters? Does Barry Hankerson own R. Kelly's masters right now? Or is that another uh, rumor? I'm not sure, but okay. that's what they say. Right, right. Wow. But I know uh, there's some songs out that... Gary Hankerson is known as to be a writer of Rob songs. Mm -hmm. Gary Hankerson never had wrote a song in his life with Rob. He's got like songwriting credits for it. Mm -hmm. Right. Now I won't know how that happened. Mm -hmm. And you know how YouTube has the the whole um, copyright claim. And when I was doing the video for um, Born Into the 90s, they were saying that p portions of those those songs in that video was from public announcement. Now, A Honey Love was all our Kelly songs, right? 
I mean that that was all his, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. He, uh, he actually wrote Honey Love before he got with a uh, public announcement. Exactly. He did Honey Love when he was with MGM. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, they have it here. We on... saw. I think he saw uh, Honey Love when he was on the uh, what's that show where he had the contest? Uh, that Natalie Cole. Yes, mm-hmm. Natalie Cole, Big Break. Big Break. Yep. Yeah. Well, they have it on YouTube as a public announcement. The copyright claim says public announcement. And um, there's another one. I mean, I'll send you a screenshot of it. But um, I was wondering about that. I said, that's R. Kelly's song. It was a group. Well, yeah. I don't know why with the uh, publishing rights go to public announcement mm-hmm. but it was R. Kelly and public announcement public announcement yes yeah, yeah R. Kelly wasn't he wasn't in the group he was the side for the group it was like Gladys Knight in the Pips yeah <laughs> got it yep Smokey Robinson and the Miracles like Smokey Robinson won the Miracles he was Smokey Robinson but the Miracles was tied on to yeah. like public announcement was tied on to R. Kelly Mhm. Okay, maybe that's how it's like that. Well, well, I just really thank you for talking to me. I wish I had a, been able to let everyone know that we were going to have this conversation. I didn't know how it was going to go because I would have had people call in and maybe we can schedule something like that so they can put their input in it, but I just don't want people to be live and saying calling in saying negative things about you know mr kelly and you know that's that's just how i feel about him you know um i think he is a wonderful wonderful singer um that whole so now his his vocals when he got the surgery his his voice surgery um when he came back he was even stronger i think he had more of a mature sound at that point you know, um, versus the younger sound that he has, you know. Yeah, it was like a gift and a curse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, then he had, uh, right after he had surgery, doctor told him, don't go, don't do no music. And he went right, right into the studio and started doing music. <laughs> <laughs> Hard head. <laughs> yeah. Right. He, but that's how he deal with his life. You know, he, he deals with things through his music. Mm-hmm. Um, that gives him a sense of calmness. Um, but, yeah, he was going through, uh, he came out with the song, Shut Up, after he had the surgery. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's why he, he, on the song Shut Up, he's talking about, now that I got my voice back, let me start off by saying that. Yeah. Because they wanted him to, they wanted him to uh, shut up and be muted then. Mm-hmm. And then but the, the I admit, actually, yeah. They actually wanted to uh, mute him back during the first trial. The radio station was trying to mute him then, but when that song the initial came out, everybody just, the, the whole cancellation and mute thing just went out the window. Now he's back on the radio. So I think that now has, like, it, they learned from that, and now they trying to not make that same mistake again. Well, he can go independent, and he got enough followers right now that's not even... That's, you know, we call it, um, we call it like, you know, well, we're not in the Hollywood arena. He can do some independent stuff that can just blow him straight up. I mean, if he go back to the studio within 30 days, you know, he would actually have more people on Uh his team now that are genuine and truly real. I just hope that, you know, the women that that he does not continue to be a sex icon 
to where these women can use and abuse and manipulate him. You know, to the yeah. degree where even a scandal could possibly come up. And he never even came into the music industry to be a sex icon, uh, a sex symbol. He just wanted to sing and make music, all types of music, mm -hmm. country music, pop music, any type of music, gospel. And the, the record label put that image on him. and said, you're going to do it this way. We need you to be a, a sex symbol. So he never, that wasn't really his original plan to be a sex symbol. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now they're talking about he made music to get underage girls, which is mind-blowing to me. Absolutely. Because I just went to McDonald's today, and guess what? I wasn't stalking no teenagers. I don't understand how that even came about. Like... If you go to McDonald's, you live in Chicago, you know that this is the McDonald's that R. Kelly goes to, to the drive-thru, to the drive-thru, and sometimes just go in and hang out, sing for his meals even at a time when, you know, back in the day. And why would they say that that's why he was at McDonald's? Like, that was so stupid. Well, McDonald's can't. It, McDonald's is another place that gives him like a sense of calmness. It brings back a lot of childhood memories. Mm -hmm. um, dealing with his mom. Yeah. And sometimes he'd go order food from McDonald's and just only take like one or two bites of it, and that but he don't eat the whole meal. Right. He just there because it gives him those memories from when he was going there with his mom. And, it's like his mom's spirit is there. It's still in, yeah, yeah. And he ended up, actually, when he got his house at the uh, Trump Tower, right outside the window, he, he could see McDonald's, but he didn't know that if McDonald's going to be outside his window, that he could watch McDonald's. Somebody yeah. else had picked the house for him. And it's just so ironic that the way the position of the house was, who's looking over at McDonald's. <laughs> because I think, really, I think he is a spiritual essence. I think he came to this planet to do some good deeds, to do some great singing, to meet some wonderful people because he's an angel. He's an angel in disguise. Like, And I don't know why I'm saying this like this, but I mean, you're right. Everything is so like connected to him. Like <laughs> you say his name and a lot of people was just right there. Like I yeah. never, I never like your, your page, my, my YouTube channel, just because we say his name, people will come to him. It's like amazing how it happens. So I wanted to know if you knew anything since we were talking about his mom, Joanne Kelly, may you be in peace. Um, his father, had had you ever gotten an opportunity to know, had he ever talked to you about that relationship with his father? Um, yeah, he never knew his father. Right. Uh, never knew him, never met him. Um, it was just a sad situation. Um, he always wanted to know who he was. But every time he would ask his mom about who his father was, he would see his brothers and his sister. They father come by every now and then, every blue moon, um, to, you know, give them Christmas gifts or birthday gifts or something like that. He asked his mom, like, when am I, when is my father going to come by? And she would just tell him, like, I'm your father. Never ask me that question again. Mm -hmm. um, so he lived his whole life and wondering, chasing after uh, who his father could be. And you know what's so ironic? And, if you look at paternity but, court, people mm -hmm. are people are finding their kids during a time like they can be 50, 60, and they're like, oh, I remember... I wonder if this kid was mine. Like, no father 
No man ever came and said, I want a DNA test to see if he's my son. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But uh, to him, his father is was his stepfather. Um, who his mom was uh, with. Right. So that's the only father he knows. Yes. And he actually named the character after his father that who his mom was with that he known to be his father. Mm -hmm. uh, he named the character of Captain Plaza after him, uh, Lucius. Lucius, yep. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Speaking of Trapped in the Closet, so are those episodes still out and available to view? Uh, yeah. You, okay. Does he get royalties? You can royalties? view them okay. on uh, Facebook. Got it. Okay. Now, does he still get royalties for that? That was yes. his work. Okay. Yes, yes. He, he still gets, he's still getting the royalties. The problem is that the royalties are so tied up right now due to a lot of things uh, like lawsuits. Yeah, that had the Williams. Mm -hmm. And and he's not making as much money with his royalty as he would have. Because uh, also, a lot of places around the world canceling his music on radios. And we're trying to, that's one thing right now we're trying to do is get them to start back playing his music. We're working on doing that, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that they can also help him, help him out and Right. The world, but when the world hears music, it's gonna take away a lot of that negative negativity. Yes. Yes. So, how many more um, signatures do you need in order to um, submit that uh, petition to the radio station? Well, uh, from what I was hearing, we had needed a thousand. I think we got the thousand now. Good. But uh, more, more is better. Mm -hmm. he just keep signing it because you never know yes you just never know how they may try to run things but just keep signing it. Mm -hmm. keep signing that petition to unmute this music yes so facebook your um your your page can you share the name of the page and how to get to the page i'll put the link in the description to... Oh yes. Mm -hmm. uh, the name of the page is called Celebrating R. Kelly. Um, you can simply get to the page by going to Facebook and then put in, and then you search for celebrate. Put in Celebrating R. Kelly when you're searching for something. Like you're searching for somebody's name, let's say like William Lewis. You may put in William Lewis through searching engine thing on Facebook, but instead you just put in Celebrating R. Kelly. And then it'll pop up. You click on the page and then click on join. Mm -hmm. At the top of the page is the join button. And then you can even invite your friends to it as well by clicking on the invite button. It'll take you down a list of your people who you are friends with, of course. And then you can share it, put it on my other websites. It shows you a link to share it. Mm -hmm. Messenger. All types of things. All right. Is there anything okay. else you would like to say, or you would? Because right now we were just going with the flow, and it feels like a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and we're doing pretty good, but I know people are going to have a hundred questions for you. <laughs> I'm always willing to come back and answer, you know, questions. I, I do my very best to be as honest as I can. When we're answering these questions, mm -hmm. um, so I'm always open to that. Okay. And I just want to tell the people out there, you know, I appreciate Rob. Appreciate you. Uh, he loves you. He, he's getting all your letters. Um, sometimes he may not be able to respond back to your letters because it'd be so many, and then, um. He have a hard time with just reading it, and he got to get people to 
uh, help him out with reading some of those letters. So it it's just a little burden on him right now, but he he get back to you uh, randomly. He just randomly picks someone and just write them back. Mm-hmm. And um, he loves you guys. You know, stay positive. Keep your heads up. Stay prayerful. Keep praying. If you can't do nothing else, pray. Prayer is the most important thing in this whole fight, after all. Wow. Thank you. And when you write them, send them encouraging letters. Mm -hmm. Don't don't talk to them about the negativity that you may see see going around like other bloggers or on Facebook or something. Just keep it positive. Write them and tell them how much he means to you, what his music meant. Hang on. It's an uphill battle. But he will win. He will be victorious. And remind him of that. But that's it. (laughs) Okay. I got so many ladies that calls um, Rob, their husband, my hubby, my boo. He coming home. (laughs) I'm like, yes, I just give him a love. Like, yes, he's coming home. So, and that's something that I really hope that he's going to be working on the, the, the healing from the, the very things that other people, you know, try to accuse him of the, just the healing of that, because to come back home, that's a battle too, because you're going to be wondering, is this person really thinking this about me or, you know, this isn't true or. Yeah, I got your back 100%. You know, you don't know who's coming and how they're how they're going to respond to him. So it's a really wonderful thing to see the women just still being there, um, not as as um, just people trying to just people to support him. That's who we want to embrace ourselves with. That's why I've come along and partner with your Facebook page, you've partnered with our YouTube page. Um, and I think I love your YouTube. Thank you. <laughs> you are on fire. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You're so bringing much. it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you because I'm telling you, R. Kelly, he brought me through a lot. You know, I've been incarcerated and I went through. Really? Yes. Yes. Back in 20, in 2011, I was, um, laced and i had just started my business first black Uh you know business trying to help small businesses get up and running and my neighbor and i swear i thought it was a governmental conspiracy i swear i did but um then i ended up you know driving seven miles getting into this altercation in this suburban area and i was incarcerated they were going to give me 34 years and wow. yeah, I told him, I said, I blacked out because when I went to county, I ended up with LSD, PCP, heroin, traces, and crack cocaine in my system. And I don't know what that's like. All I remember doing is drinking a margarita and smoking a puff of, a puff or two of marijuana. Uh-huh. <laughs> Man, the next thing you know, I'm facing 34 years and they tell me oh but if you just plea then we'll give you six months in county jail and i'm like wait a minute that don't make sense (laughs) why why do you tell me to plea but yet you tell me that i'm facing 34 years i took it to trial and i was going to get probation they ended up giving me four years and marysville's correctional institution from 2016 June I was I got off out in December 18th 2018 so I couldn't believe wow. it I'd never been in trouble a day in my life you know I'm a criminal justice major I have a doctorate in leadership I had done all this community service philanthropy work 
worked for so many nonprofit agencies, and that's what happened to me. But when I got all, out, all of that didn't mean nothing to them. No, no. But it meant that's something just to like me. With, uh, when it comes to Rob, he did gave back to nonprofit organizations, help people out with the funerals, uh, paying off the funerals. Mm -hmm. uh, donating to uh, people with disabilities, donating food and all these things. But you never hear that about him. But he don't even care about you hearing it about him because he's not doing it for the, hey, good job, the pat on the back or whatever. Right. He's doing it from the heart. And that's what people don't get. The passion. See, we're strong and we're, we have that melanin in us to just con continue to keep kicking. You know what I mean? Keep fighting, you know? And that's yes. what, yeah, that's what made me come out and get even stronger. And now I'm over here with R. Kelly. Like, I didn't even know this was happening. You know, it's so ironic. I said I was going to do a video on this, but I'm going to share this part with you. When he uh -huh. first got incarcerated, when he was um, for the child support, something shook me. I was asleep and something kept working me like I sleep good. OK, good night sleep. And I get up early and everything is good. But this night, something kept shaking me like not touching me, shaking me, but inside of my spirit. It was just like, get up get up. I need you. And I'm like, Oh, what am I supposed to be doing? Why am I even up? And then all of a sudden I come to my computer and I just start the R Kelly appeal. And I'm like, why do I want to call it an appeal? Cause this wasn't even set up yet in the whole process of this thing. Oh, really? Yeah. And I swear Lolo, it was like, he was right in my living room, standing up saying, get up. Come write this stuff for me. I need you. And that's how R. Kelly Appeal came to be. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And I said I was going to really, really get deep into that. And that's why I know he's spiritual. I know he's, he's spiritually aligned. And that's how he can call forth people in mass numbers. Yeah. And, and he can do it yes. mentally, too. He can do it mentally. But that's a whole yeah, other topic. I, I, I know, I know all about it. you. Can do it mentally too. For some reason, like I, I hear that too. In, in my head, I just hear his voice saying certain things to me. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah. So he knows how to manifest, and I talk about that in a few of the podcasts, especially in Solar Coaster, when he would meet with uh, Michael Jordan. Okay. I need you. Now, I done met with you as Michael Jordan playing basketball because you come through this whole Tuesday night party thing just to come to tell me I need you to make a song for me. So he manifested him to meet him on the court just so he can make a song for him. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing, right? Yes. Yeah, that's power right there. That's power. And not many of us know how to use it and align it. But with that power comes so much physical chaos that we got to fight. And that's where he needs to be. He needs to be in that fight mode at all times. You know, I was listening to his um, BET interview and he was chilling. Public announcement was, you know, there. And they said one thing that he says, don't get lazy. Most people hit one, one hit wonders because they got lax and lazy. Well, see, he never got lazy, but people were watching and trying to see where they can get in to maneuver to take him down because he was so great, so great. And he is yeah. great and he will be great again. Trust and believe because <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. You know, that kind of reminds me of a lot of these, uh, R&B stars right now. Mm -hmm. uh, like, let's take Tank, for example. Uh, Tank came out against 
Rob, and when the Doctor series came out, first came out, mm-hmm. talking about me or Kelly. But uh, when he did that, it was kind of like he was hoping to get the seat that Rob was sitting at as the king of R&B. In my mind. And that could never happen. Because he may sing, but he's not. You know, R. Kelly got that that unique voice. Nobody can duplicate that. Nobody. Yeah. Same thing with John Legend. I did a video on him. Like, really? Your last name is Legend and you hating on somebody? You should be over there in the corner doing your own thing. Yeah, but nobody won't talk about him being on the uh, Epstein Island. Oh, really? Nobody, nobody won't talk about him doing the uh, tribute to Elvis right after he just did this documentary on Rob. Yeah, we just talked about that with um, Elvis Presley was 25 years old and married this girl that was 14. And in 17 states, Dr. Shabazz, Ali says 17 states don't even have a, so saying that to say, even if this was the case and this did happen to say one or two individuals, there are so many lax uh, uh, stipulations on underage marriages. People get Mm -hmm. married. We ain't even talking about just relationships. I'm talking about married. And who is Oprah? T- oh, 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 okay, so who is Oprah did it with the color purple when the father had sex with the daughter and then turned around and told her that he was giving her babies away? And she was young, the father. Yeah. So this stuff has been going on for years and they're trying to put a name and a title onto greatness like that and it's wrong it's so wrong but we digress and we come back and we say it's going to be okay <laughs> yeah it's yeah. going to be okay wow so we need yeah. to have group chats where we can really push this information out to people yes we do so I'm going to call you after we get off the um, air and you and I, we're going to do some things. We should okay. even have meetups. I mean, in different locations and just party and celebrate R. Kelly like he's out there, put all his music like right there in the room and just everybody step in the name of love. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, step. <laughs> yes, have a backyard party, you know. Yeah, that would be nice. Wow. And just wear all white and get dressed up like him. Right now, I haven't been able to get dressed up to go anywhere and do anything. Like the pandemic. No. Oh, and that's another thing. Being being convicted during a time of a pandemic means something too. You feel what me? What do you mean? Being convicted during a time of a pandemic with R. Kelly's case being during a pandemic, there is so much more to that. It's historical. It went down in history, just like the pandemic. Yeah. Something that nobody can ever say they never knew about. And that's how, that's how the powers that be work. Mm. I didn't think of it like that. <laughs> I mean, we can get deep with this, man. I go deep, but I kept saying out of all the times that this could have happened, it happened during the pandemic. And the Will Smith slap also happened during the time. If you pay attention to every time R. Kelly's case was being discussed, something else went on. Yeah. Yeah. Something happened in this case when I think when Katanji Brown Jackson something happened during the same time. It, 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 it's, it's, it's so connected. 
And I don't want to talk too much because I don't know if I'm opening. uh, Yeah. (laughs) But there, there is something happening. Just like June 16th, there is no May 4th. You know, I study the alignment of the moon phase and I get into that. I've been doing that since who 2006 when I traded in Christianity for for Kemeticism. And Mm -hmm. one thing I can say is dates are very vital to the outcome of situations. So I followed May 4th. May 4th was an opening in a portal of the universe where, you know, we learned about Jupiter and all the, the, the planets in science in the sixth grade, but we never took it any further. But there is something powerful that happens in the universe that aligns on critical dates. Uh So I need to go study what June 16th represents, what's happening, you know, because R. Kelly is a Capricorn that's ruled by Saturn. So Saturn is the bringer of hard lessons, the bringer of change, the bringer of, of, of longevity. Uh There's a reason why he's a Capricorn, see? Uh, But we'll get deeper into that on another. Because I know these people are like, what is she talking about? What the hell? (laughs) But I thank you. I thank you so much (laughs) for just being here and just helping me. Because you're helping me, see, too. Because I knew that something was wrong. And I knew... I said, how are these people? I said, at what point in life will somebody be able to just tell a story about someone and they get incarcerated because the story they told, but yet there's no evidence. There's no pictures. There's nothing, but just words. Just words. Sad. He say, she say. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I thought it was based on facts. Any other case would be based on facts. And there's another thing happening on the internet. And I'm telling people it's the technical laws that are coming out under the form of technology. We need to work. We we need to start looking at the laws. Because the laws are going to project and they may use R. Kelly's case as precedence to at this point now incarcerate anyone anyone for any of those initial situations and this is what the prosecutors are working towards that's so scary it is very scary and that's the case they can prosecute anybody and not only that they can put any type of child pornography on anybody's computer because Guess what? Our information is sold every single day to people we don't even know. They can just put child pornography on you without even putting it on your computer. Because all the you gotta say is girls come and say that she she did it with you and they ain't got to present it in court. Because they didn't present it in court in New York. Mm. But he was found guilty of, they said, Sex exploitation depicting a minor <laughs> for the mm-hmm. man act. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But there was no evidence of that. Exactly. And, and the prosecutors said it in their closing arguments, saying, you know that he did it because uh, Geronda told you he did it. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh, the biggest lie. Like, the biggest liar yeah. of them all. And, it, and you know he did it because Jane told you he did. Wow. That was the evidence of, uh, for the closing argument. And the jurors fed into it. Because mm-hmm. they already had their mind made up before the trial even began. And see, I think R. Kelly is a good icon for our African-American young boys that are just coming from sixth grade into puberty. Yeah. To see how to handle themselves sexually in the locker yeah. rooms, in the bathrooms of schools. 
Because you know how many times somebody could have been, um, you know, accused of, of sexual assault. There was many times my booty got felt on and I didn't know who did it in high school. Yeah. Is that sexual assault? See what I'm saying? Yeah. They have to come up with something better than this. They're just hit and missing. And that Me Too movement is saying everybody, anybody can jump on board and do whatever you want. Oh, this is the, this is the movement. No, it's not the movement. You need to train people how to be, what is the etiquette for sexual situations in society? When Hollywood creates the, the rated R movies, the violent movies. Yeah. You know, but yeah, I digress. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) So yes, I thank you so much, Daddy Lolo and... I will be coming to your Facebook page and we need to schedule another uh, conversation um, so we can invite people in to ask their questions and really get deeper. Okay, that's fine. All right. <laughs> so we thank you. Yeah, Our... you know, that may bring some other people along with me. Absolutely. Yes, yes. As long as we're on the same board of of, you know, representing Robert Sylvester Kelly in the best positive light that we can and, you know, and being professional because that's what this channel is all about too, professional, you know, um, aspects, you know, so get everything in order, you know, and, and I understand sometimes people may be angry, but we have to learn to use our words in a very respectful way so that all people can enjoy the content. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. And thank everyone for viewing, liking, commenting, subscribing, and also sharing this podcast. And as always, keep it 100 and we'll see you next time.